Hello, have you ever heard of the animal called deer mouse? If not, please leave a number one in the comments and I will answer all your questions about deer mice in this video. Deer mouse meat, a unique and distinctive dish from many rural areas of Vietnam, has become an essential part of the local cuisine. With its sweet flavor and tender texture, deer mouse meat is prepared in a variety of delicious ways, such as grilled with chili salt, stir-fried, or simmered with lemongrass, offering an unforgettable culinary experience for diners. Moreover, this meat is not only tasty, but also highly nutritious, rich in protein, and low in fat, making it an ideal choice for those seeking a healthy and balanced diet. Today, as consumer trends shift toward natural and clean foods, deer mouse meat is attracting interest from many consumers. Vietnam and Malaysia are two countries developing the deer mouse farming industry. Although known as a nutritious food source, deer mouse farming has not yet become widespread, creating a significant opportunity for investors and farmers. Are you curious about how they raise deer mice? Stay tuned for the next part of the video. First, let's visit the enclosure for the deer mice. The shelter is designed to be well ventilated, with a frame made from readily available materials like bamboo or metal, as deer mice have relatively weak resistance to environmental factors. The minimum area for housing about 10 deer mice is 15 square meters. According to one farmer, the cost of building the enclosure ranges from $200 to $300, depending on the materials and design used. They will also plant plenty of greenery in the deer mouse area to provide the best environment for their development. After preparing the enclosure, the next step is selecting deer mice for breeding. Farmers will choose healthy specimens with a clear lineage. To select robust deer mice, farmers observe their balanced physique, aiming for an adult weight of about 1 to 1.5 kilograms. They prioritize mice with shiny fur, bright skin, no signs of illness, and lively behavior, as these traits indicate good reproductive potential. The cost of purchasing breeding stock ranges from $10 to $15 per mouse, meaning that to raise 10 mice, a farmer will need approximately $100 to $150. Deer mice are omnivorous creatures that can eat grass, leafy vegetables, and various food scraps. Their primary diet consists of fresh grass and pellets made from corn, soybeans, and other ingredients. Each day, a deer mouse consumes approximately 2 to 3 kilograms of food. Additionally, they will also nibble on the leaves of plants grown in their enclosure. Taking care of deer mice is crucial to ensure their health.
Farmers regularly check their health, administer vaccinations, and maintain proper hygiene in the enclosures. It is recommended to clean the enclosures at least once a week to remove waste and litter, minimizing the risk of disease. If you find this video interesting, please leave a comment with the number 1. Female deer mice can reproduce two to three times a year, with each litter typically consisting of one to two offspring. Separate enclosures are prepared for the young to ensure their safety and prevent competition for food with their mother. With proper care, each deer mouse can reach a weight of 1.5 to 2 kilograms after about 3 to 4 months. When the deer mice reach the standard weight, farmers can begin the harvesting process. Currently, the market price for deer mouse meat ranges from $3 to $5 per kilogram. If a farmer raises 10 mice, each weighing approximately 1.5 kilograms, they can harvest around 15 kilograms of meat, yielding a revenue of $45 to $75. With a straightforward farming process and low investment costs, raising deer mice can provide a stable profit for farmers. The grilled deer mouse is a delicious specialty that is loved by many in the rural areas of Vietnam. The meat is marinated with spices such as salt, pepper, garlic, and chili, then grilled over hot coals, creating an enticing aroma. When cooked, the meat turns a golden color, with crispy skin and tender, sweet flesh inside. This dish is not only tasty, but also offers a delightful experience when enjoyed with friends and family. Many believe it captures the distinctive flavors of the countryside, evoking fond childhood memories. With the growth of the culinary industry, grilled deer mouse is becoming increasingly popular and is now a common choice at gatherings and celebrations. One of the main feeds for deer mice is corn, a crop commonly grown in agricultural fields. The farming of deer mice and the cultivation of corn are closely linked from production to harvest. Leave a zero if you find this video boring. Farmers typically begin planting corn in early spring, and after about 90 to 120 days of care, the corn plants mature and produce ears. The corn harvesting process usually occurs between September and November, when the corn has ripened and is ready for harvest. During the harvest, farmers typically use modern harvesting machines to save time and labor. These machines can quickly gather corn ears, significantly improving labor productivity. On average, a single harvesting machine can harvest about 1 to 2 hectares of corn in one day, reducing the time required for harvesting compared to traditional manual methods and allowing farmers to save significantly on labor costs. The harvest value from each hectare of corn can reach up to $1,500 to $2,000 per season. Mm -hmm. 
After harvest, the corn ears are sorted and stored for various uses. Some will be used as feed for deer mice, while others will be processed into food for humans, such as sweet corn, popcorn, or cornmeal. Corn not only provides essential nutrients for deer mice, but also offers high economic value for farmers. By utilizing corn as a feed source, farmers can minimize their livestock feeding costs while improving both the productivity and quality of deer mice meat. Do you find this idea interesting? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Corn exports have become one of the important agricultural sectors in the global economy, with several countries, including the United States, Argentina, and Brazil, leading the way in supplying corn to international markets. Corn is not only grown for domestic consumption, but also serves as a major export commodity, with millions of tons shipped to countries in Asia, Europe, and Africa each year. Products made from corn, such as cornmeal, sweet corn, and roasted corn, are popular due to their delicious flavors and high nutritional value. In cuisine, corn is a versatile ingredient found in many different dishes. In various countries, corn is used to make popcorn, a popular snack in movie theaters. In Mexico, corn is a key ingredient in traditional dishes such as tortillas, tamales, and elote, grilled corn. Corn is also processed into cornmeal, which is used to make breads, corn cakes, and other sweet treats. Furthermore, in everyday meals, corn can be cooked into soups and salads, or served alongside meats and vegetables, creating rich and nutritious meals. Corn is not only used in main dishes, but has also become an interesting ingredient for many delicious desserts. From corn flour, soft-baked goods can be made, such as steamed corn cakes or corn pudding, offering a delightful flavor and unique texture. One standout dessert is corn flan, which combines the sweetness of corn with the creaminess of flan, creating a novel culinary experience for those who try it. Additionally, corn is used to make corn ice cream, a refreshing dessert that is very popular during the summer. Sweet corn is ground and mixed with cream and sugar, resulting in a rich, naturally sweet flavor. With its high content of protein, carbohydrates, and fiber, corn provides the necessary energy for the growth and development of livestock such as cattle, pigs, and poultry. One of the greatest advantages of corn is its digestibility, which helps livestock absorb nutrients more effectively. Additionally, corn is cost-effective, helping farmers reduce production costs. Furthermore, using corn in animal husbandry enhances the immune system and improves the health of livestock, which in turn increases the quality of meat and milk production.
As the sun begins to rise, the day at the mango cake factory kicks off. Freshly picked mangoes, meticulously selected from the orchard, are delivered daily at 7 a.m. The mangoes are washed and placed on trays to drain. Workers peel the fruit, leaving only the vibrant yellow flesh. Meanwhile, on another line, workers prepare the cream by whipping heavy cream with a whisk. One hundred egg yolks are mixed with five pounds of sugar and beaten in a machine until the mixture turns into a smooth cream. Then two pounds of flour are added and mixed in. Egg whites are whipped into a meringue and then combined with the egg yolk mixture. The batter is poured into molds and baked at 350F for about 25 minutes. Once cooled, workers assemble the cakes with layers of cake, cream, and mango slices. The factory produces up to 100 mango cakes daily, delivering a sweet, fresh mango flavor combined with velvety cream. Besides mango cake, mangoes can also be used to make another delightful dessert at home, mango ice cream. The simple ingredients include fresh mangoes, heavy cream, and a bit of sugar. Blend the mangoes with the cream and sugar. Then transfer the mixture into a container and freeze for about 4-6 hours. Once the ice cream has set, you can enjoy a refreshing, delicious, and nutritious treat. Mango sticky rice is a fantastic choice for breakfast, offering a perfect blend of sweet flavor and a soft texture. This dish is made with glutinous rice cooked in coconut milk, creating a creamy and fragrant rice base. When paired with fresh, juicy mango slices, the dish becomes even more special with its refreshing and natural sweetness from the fruit. Mango sticky rice not only provides a generous boost of energy to start your day, but also adds a colorful and enticing touch to your morning meal. Looking at that golden brown meat sizzling on the grill, can you guess what it is? You'll be quite surprised when I reveal it. This is a dish of rat meat, a renowned specialty in the traditional cuisine of rural Hunan, China. If you're concerned about food safety, don't worry, these rats are raised by local farmers. Join me as we explore a rat farm supplying the Chinese market and uncover their secrets. Once an unforgettable nightmare for Chinese farmers, the rats in Hunan caused countless sleepless nights. A 
thousand rats operated like a marauding gang at night, their agility posing a significant challenge. They darted around like the wind, leaving farmers scrambling for solutions. So desperate were they that they enlisted hunting dogs, loyal warriors tasked with eradicating the rats. However, this approach only managed to take out a fraction of the rats compared to their rapid reproduction rate. In 1990, at the height of the rat infestation, a farmer in Hunan came up with a unique idea to tackle the rodent problem, raise them instead. Rather than viewing rats as mere pests, he saw the potential for them to become a tasty dish and a cost-effective farming option. With creativity and determination, he set out to catch rats to breed them, turning a nightmare into a new business opportunity. The rural areas of Hunan are famously known as the Kingdom of Rats. Each household typically owns a rat farm with over 1,000 rats. Large containers, ranging from 4 to 5 feet in size, serve as homes for these rat families. Hunan is also the largest supplier of rats in China. Leveraging the relentless breeding characteristics of rats, farmers have developed effective breeding strategies. Male and female rats are carefully selected based on health and age, with females aged two to six months being ideal. To ensure successful mating, the rats are placed in separate areas, which facilitates breeding and protects the young. Rats breed year-round, with peak periods often in spring and fall. A female rat can have six to 12 pups per litter and can produce four to six litters annually. Thanks to this high reproductive rate, farms can efficiently maintain and expand their rat population. During pregnancy, female rats are fed grains to provide the necessary energy and nutrients for the development of their offspring. This ensures that the females remain healthy and improves the chances of a successful pregnancy. The food intake is typically higher than usual, with about 20-30 grams of grains per day. Female rats are fed two, three times daily instead of just once to meet the increased nutritional demands during pregnancy. At a rat farm, after each breeding season, the number of newborn rats typically ranges from 60 to 100.
Annually, the total number of new rats can exceed 400. And this is just from one farm. Be sure to give a thumbs up to the video for the hardworking farmer. If you think raising rats is unsanitary, you're quite mistaken. At the rat farm, cage cleaning is meticulously done twice a day. Rat waste is thoroughly removed to maintain a clean environment and prevent diseases. Not only is the waste cleaned up, but it's also repurposed as organic fertilizer for the farm's crops. Rats at the farm are usually ready for sale after about two to three months of raising. Once they reach the required size and weight, The standard weight for selling rats is around 0.8 to 1 pound for males and 0.6 to 0.9 pound for females. Rats that meet these standards are typically healthy, disease-free, and uniformly developed. Each batch for sale generally ranges from 50 to 80 rats, depending on the size of the farm and market demand. Once processed, rat meat is carefully packaged and vacuum sealed to ensure quality and extend shelf life. This process helps maintain the meat's freshness and distinctive flavor while protecting it from bacteria and oxygen. Vacuum packaging not only makes storage convenient, but also facilitates easy transportation to consumer markets. In Hunan, China, processed rat meat is even considered a unique gift for visitors, offering an intriguing introduction to local culinary traditions. In China, rat meat is a popular street food found at many markets and food stalls. Its popularity, especially in regions like Hunan, comes from its distinctive flavor and its role in traditional cuisine. Vendors often serve rat meat skewered, stir-fried, or cooked in hearty stews, attracting both locals and adventurous tourists. The dish is favored for its unique taste and affordability, becoming an integral part of the vibrant food scene. This reflects the diverse and bold nature of Chinese culinary traditions. Try these dishes when you come to China.
This product isn't just your run-of-the-mill chocolate spread. It's a culinary cultural icon, evoking sweet memories and the distinctive flavors of childhood. The origin of Nutella draws inspiration from Italy in the 1940s, when a shortage of cocoa due to World War II sparked the creativity of manufacturers. Mr. Pietro Ferrero, the mastermind behind Nutella, concocted a creative recipe blending hazelnuts, cocoa, and milk crafting a fresh and delicious new chocolate spread. Since then, Nutella has become an icon of Italian cuisine, spreading its wings globally and becoming an indispensable part of many households and coffee shops. With its rich, smooth, and nutritious flavor, Nutella isn't just a chocolate spread. It's a slice of memories and emotions for millions around the world. Immersing oneself in the fascinating world of Nutella production is a true adventure. From meticulously harvested cocoa beans to the final packaged product, each step of this journey is spellbinding. At Cocoa Farms, the sight of diligent workers carefully plucking cocoa pods and selecting only the finest quality beans invokes admiration for their dedication and skill. And the scene at modern cocoa processing plants is unforgettable. Giant machines split cocoa pods in half, followed by workers deftly separating cocoa beans from their husks, showcasing their finesse and work efficiency. Seeing the cocoa beans dried and meticulously inspected before roasting brings to mind the heavenly aroma of chocolate. And when those final cocoa beans are ground into cocoa powder, Visions of a steaming, aromatic cup of hot chocolate await in our imaginative spaces. It's not just cocoa. Witnessing the sugar production process from harvesting to refining creates another kind of excitement. The careful selection of pure white sugar cubes and the concern for the well-being and health of dairy cows all highlight the care and respect for the production environment. Especially remarkable is observing the careful harvesting of hazelnuts in Turkey, then roasted and processed to create a soft, creamy hazelnut mixture surprising us with the flexibility and efficiency of modern machinery. Last but not least, let's not forget palm oil is an essential ingredient that makes Nutella softer and more enticing than ever. The palm oil production process, from harvesting to extraction, paints a picture of the intricacy and diversity of this industry. Seeing these exquisite ingredients come together in the Nutella production process creates a perfect final product, melting both our hearts and taste buds. There's nothing quite like biting into a Nutella slathered piece of bread with all the ingredients delicately combined, delivering a true experience of sweet, creamy indulgence. Drop a one if you're a Nutella fan.
Simasaba, a traditional dish from South Korea, isn't just tasty, but also nutritious and full of allure. The mass production process of simasaba at Korean seafood factories is carried out with flexibility and sophistication, ensuring the quality of the final product. From selecting fresh, firm-fleshed mackerel to processing and marinating the fish in a solution of salt, vinegar, and sugar, each step is executed with precision and care. Boiling and steaming the fish is delicately adjusted to ensure it's tender and evenly infused with flavors. After steaming, the fish is completely cooled before being immersed in the marinade to create the distinctive flavor of simasaba. This process not only ensures the fish retains its deliciousness and aroma for a long time, but also guarantees food safety. Simasaba can be stored in the refrigerator for one to two weeks, allowing you to enjoy this delectable dish anytime, anywhere. Moreover, you can flexibly adjust the seasoning and add different vegetables to create unique and diverse versions of Simasaba to suit your taste. Thanks to the flexible and sophisticated production process at Korean seafood factories, simasaba is not just a traditional dish but also a symbol of creativity and the special flavors of Korean cuisine. Whether you're a novice farmer or a seasoned gardener, tending to a vegetable garden is never a walk in the park. But fret not, because the automatic spinach planter has arrived to tackle this challenge for you. With modern technology, the automatic spinach planter is the perfect companion. Just place the spinach seedlings in their designated spots on the machine and it'll automatically handle everything from digging holes and sowing seeds to watering and pesticide spraying. Not only does it save you time and effort, but the automatic spinach planner also boosts productivity and product quality. With this device, you can relax while your vegetable garden is well taken care of. That's the power of convenience and efficiency that the automatic spinach planner brings to modern farmers. Drop a zero if you prefer meat over salad. After 50 to 70 days of non-stop nurturing, our spinach farm has reached the harvest stage. This machine is the perfect choice for spinach harvesting, saving labor while maximizing productivity. And here's how farmers harvest spinach using hydroponic farming methods. The final stop before hitting the mainstream market is the spinach processing plant. They separate the spinach leaves and give them a thorough rinse. Passing through multiple weighing stations and voila, salad boxes are born in a flash.
At another facility, the process of packaging organic salads isn't just technical, it's an art form. From timing the harvest to preserve that fresh flavor to careful packaging to ensuring product quality, each step is done with meticulous attention. Alongside the convenience and cleanliness of the product, this process reflects a spirit of care and respect for the environment. Using biodegradable packaging and atmosphere control not only keeps salads fresh longer, but also minimizes environmental impact. With the perfect blend of science and art, organic salads from this packaging process aren't just a product, they're a masterpiece of passion and reverence for nature. The fully automated onion harvester isn't just your run-of-the-mill agricultural equipment. It's a symbol of sophistication and modernity in the farming industry. Capable of harvesting thousands of onions per hour, this beast not only boosts production efficiency but also lightens the load for farmers. Thanks to advanced cutting and suction technology, this machine not only minimizes product damage but also ensures the harvested onions are uniform and accurate. With the onion harvester, farmers not only enrich themselves but also contribute to the sustainable development of agriculture, bringing high value to the community and society. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to give us a thumbs up. The onion processing and packaging assembly line is a revolutionary breakthrough in the agricultural industry. From receiving to final packaging, each stage is automated and optimized to ensure the onions reach their freshest and highest quality. The combination of technology and meticulous care processes brings significant benefits increased productivity, reduced labor costs, improved product quality, and minimized losses are the highlights of this assembly line. With its modern appeal and convenience, the onion processing and packaging assembly line isn't just a breakthrough in production processes. It's the top choice for agricultural producers demanding sophistication and high efficiency. The Atlantic Bonito Processing Plant, where wonders and craftsmanship converge in the food industry. With a capacity of up to 25 tons of fish per day, the Atlantic Bonito Processing Plant isn't just your average production facility. It's a symbol of innovation and human ingenuity in the food industry. Every step in the processing process is executed with meticulousness and top-notch professionalism. 
From carefully filleting the bonito to selecting the finest cuts for processing and packaging. Each stage undergoes rigorous inspection to ensure the products meet the highest standards of quality and food safety. The plant's marvel doesn't just stem from its colossal scale, but also from its creative spirit and application of cutting-edge technology alongside modern production methods. This isn't just your run-of-the-mill factory, it's a symbol of resounding success and development in the food industry. Nowadays, we can grow meat in a lab completely outside the animal's body. It's called lab-grown meat or cultured meat. But does it really make industrial farms old news? Compared to terms like free-range and farm-raised, lab-grown meat leaves a lot to the imagination when it comes to how it's made, but it's not as scary as folks might think. Take a cow, for example. Scientists would use stem cells from the cow, the building blocks of muscles and other organs, to kickstart the process of creating lab-grown meat. These cells are placed in a petri dish with amino acids and carbohydrates to help them bulk up and grow. When enough muscle fibers have developed, voila! You've got yourself some ground beef that's as good as the real deal. The first lab-grown hamburger patty was cooked up in a lab back in 2012, and it cost a whopping $325,000 to produce. But as technology marches on, the price tag for cultured meat production is set to keep on shrinking. Do you think lab-grown meat impacts the environment? It's too early to say exactly how lab-grown meat production will impact the environment, but it seems to be a whole lot friendlier. Compared to regular beef, lab-grown beef requires a whopping 45% less energy uses 99% less land, and spits out a mere 4% of greenhouse gas emissions. However, a clear sign of opposition to lab-grown meat is the official ban on its production and sale in Florida after Governor DeSantis signed a new law today. This law targets meat grown by scientists in labs, making the production or sale of lab-grown meat a crime in Florida. While some argue that this new law protects Florida's livestock farming industry, opponents fear it limits consumer choice and threatens the monopoly of the free market. Drop a one if you're on board with banning lab-grown meat production.
let's circle back to the natural origins of beef, where the wonders of nature and the care of farmers blend seamlessly. Beef from the farm isn't just a nutritional choice, it's a symbol of connection to the land and to dedicated farmers. By choosing farm-raised beef, you're supporting traditional livestock farming, contributing to environmental conservation, and helping sustain rural communities. Raising beef cattle is a complex process that demands attention and full care. In this video, I'll break down the nitty-gritty of raising beef cattle from calfhood to market ready. To kick off the beef cattle raising process, farmers need top-notch breeding stock. These selected cattle could be purebred beef cattle or crossbreeds between beef and dairy breeds. They require regular monitoring and health checks to ensure they're thriving. After birth, the calf will nurse from its mother for around the first six months of life. Then they're onto grass and special feeds to pack on the pounds and grow. They're fed regularly and provided with clean water to ensure they're in tip-top shape. An essential part of the beef cattle raising process is providing them with a well-rounded and appropriate diet. This fermented feed is a widely used type of feed to enhance the health and growth of cattle. To whip up the fermented feed and beef farming, you'll first need to gather your main ingredients, including sugarcane pulp, corn, green leafy vegetables, cornmeal, soybeans, and a mineral mix. These ingredients are mixed together in proportions depending on nutritional needs and the farmer's financial prowess. Once the ingredients are prepped, they need to be dried and finely ground to boost digestibility for the cattle. These mixes are poured into fermentation tanks and left to ferment for about 7 to 10 days. During fermentation, lactic acid bacteria will work their magic, creating that tangy ferment and boosting the digestibility of the cattle. Once fermented, this feed can be served up to the cattle. Just make sure to dish out enough fermented feed to keep those bovines healthy and thriving. 
and for top-notch quality and food safety, stick to high-quality ingredients and ensure compliance with hygiene and food safety regulations. Throughout the rearing process, cattle are kept under regular surveillance and health monitoring. This involves routine vaccinations, disease checks, and illness prevention measures. If a cow falls ill, it's promptly quarantined and treated to ensure the well-being of all the other cows. Once the cattle reach the right weight to hit the market shelves, they're hauled off to processing centers for the big beefy reveal. The beef undergoes thorough inspection and packaging to meet food safety standards before it lands in stores and restaurants. In the food industry, beef production is a complex process that must be executed correctly to ensure quality and food safety. Cows are hefty critters, so specialized machinery is essential to assist factory workers in skinning and slicing the meat. The bovines hang suspended upside down on the assembly line, while skilled butchers use specialized meat saws to carve them up into smaller portions. Give a one if you're a fan of farm fresh beef. The beef production process kicks off with selecting and prepping the right cattle. They're health checked to ensure they're free from infectious diseases or other ailments, and they must meet requirements regarding breed, age, and weight to ensure meat quality. Beef is a vital nutritional staple for many, so getting the beef cuts right is crucial. The shoulder region of the cow is carved into various meat cuts, known as chuck. Chuck packs plenty of fat and muscle, perfect for grilling, stewing, or making soup. The cow's rib area is also sliced into different meat cuts, which can be bone-in or boneless. The rib meat is typically used for grilling, stewing, or making soup. The area near the cow's hip on the back is carved into short meat pieces, known as short loin. Short loin boasts plenty of muscle and minimal fat, ideal for grilling, frying, or stewing. Sirloin is a meat cut from the cow's back near the tail and has more muscle than fat. Sirloin is great for grilling, frying, or stewing. The cow's chest area is sliced into long, thin meat pieces called brisket. Brisket has plenty of fat and needs slow cooking to tenderize. Brisket is often used for stewing, making soup, or making brisket sandwiches. 
Lastly, there's a meat cut from the cow's thigh area called round. Round has less fat and plenty of muscle, perfect for grilling, stewing, or making jerky. In summary, opting for naturally sourced beef brings more health benefits to the table. Farm-raised beef typically contains fewer chemical preservatives and additives, reducing the risk of food allergies and digestive issues. Rich in omega-3 fatty acids and CLA, it's good for heart health and the immune system. Plus, natural beef is lower in growth hormones and antibiotics, helping curb the development of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. By choosing naturally sourced beef, you're also contributing to sustainable development and supporting local farmers while minimizing the negative impact of the industrial farming industry on the environment.